this video is brought to you by Brilliant. iOS 16 is officially on more than 25% of iPhones, which makes it quicker to adopt than iOS 15, and that number grows faster than you can say bad plumbing. Now, there are plenty of interesting features to discover with this new operating system, like the ability to cut out the subject of an image to paste it somewhere else. But instead of reporting on the obvious, I wanted to dig deeper and discover features and applications that I would personally take full advantage of. So, here are my favorites. Let's warm up with the easiest and perhaps the most satisfying feature of eliminating duplicate photos. This is now a built-in feature, part of the Photos app, and it is as simple as locating the folder called Duplicates. Once you find it, you can browse through the list of images and start merging the repeated ones until you reach zero or you get bored. The cool thing about this feature is that it's not only based on the image itself, but on the file size as well, which is displayed in each corner of the image. I sometimes keep images in two formats, one full size and one optimized for web. And this size comparison does give me a peace of mind when I want to be sure of the merging process and result. While in the Photos app, the next feature that Apple has taken from apps like Lightroom is the ability to copy image edits to paste on other images. Let's say I have a list of photos that I want to apply similar edits across the board. All I have to do is finish the edit on one of the photos and while still in the photo edit, tap on the top right dots icon and choose copy edits. Then I can paste the edit on another photo or even on an entire selection of photos. Not only that, but I can paste the edit to videos as well, essentially applying changes to pretty much anything in my photo library app that I've selected. Pretty cool. A quick shout out to the update scanner feature, which saves me valuable time. As I scan a lot of invoices on a regular basis, the built-in file scanner now directs you to renaming the file immediately upon saving the scan. Before you had to wait for the file to upload, then hold and tap rename, which took too long. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? The next feature that should have existed from the get-go is avoiding hanging up on a call by pressing the power button. Now, I'm not sure if I should call this a feature or more like a fix, but what matters is that it's here. To turn it on, you'll have to go to settings, then accessibility, touch, and select prevent lock to end call. Now, while on a call, you can press the power button as much as you want without worrying that you'll hang up. Ending up the call works only when pressing on the end button. Or if you're playing your hang up game, then I don't know, it might take a while. I use Siri a lot, especially while driving. I've become sort of a specialist at voice punctuation, only to be replaced by a computer. That's right, Siri now takes care of your punctuation and also adds emojis. In fact, this works across the platform when dictating, not just when sending messages. This is a more than welcome feature, but now I have another problem, and that is learning emojis. Next up is Quick Notes on the iPhone. Quick Notes existed first on the iPad, if I'm not mistaken, then found itself on the Mac, and now it's here on the iPhone. To take advantage of it, you can simply enable it from the control center. Now, even if the phone is locked, you'll be able to grab notes when necessary. Now, one thing to note here is the fact that each time you press Quick Notes, you are generating a new note. Unlike the Mac, you can go back to the same Quick Note from before. I'm more of a single Quick Notes person that prefers to have everything in one place instead of having it scattered around in new documents. As I mentioned in my Ultimate iPhone home screen setup, which I'll link at the end of this video, this is why I have created my own Notion Quick Notes page. Head over to that video later if you want to know more. Moving on to a more fun feature in iOS 16, and that is the ability to pair Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons and have sort of like a Nintendo Switch XDR experience. This happens really easy. All you have to do is press and hold on the little black buttons inside the Joy-Cons to connect them as separate left and right controllers. You can use them individually, of course, but what's cool here is that iOS recognizes them as a tandem and they work as expected. Why you might want to use Joy-Cons, you might ask? Well, one reason might be that a single Joy-Con is the most compact controller that you can take with you. Let me know in the comments if you use them with your iPhone and feel free to recommend a good title to try them with. The iOS 16 overhaul introduced new lock screen design and with that new player that stays towards the bottom of the screen. Very convenient for the largest of phones. What I learned recently is that when I tap on the album artwork, it expands to fill up the entire lock screen. Not only that, but it also changes the mood and colors of the lock screen to match 
with the album art. Very well executed and reminiscent of the older days of album art, which was a great feature on the iPods. If it's not on Apple Music artwork, let's say a YouTube video, it shows the thumbnail. Now, if you tap it again, it goes back to the player in the bottom to leave space for the notifications. Talking about notifications, there's now a new count view for them, which I immediately switched to. This not only is the more minimal approach to hint of things that you might want to check, but I see it as you getting control over notifications and not the other way around. Instead of getting distracted all the time, you see just a simple count that you can expand whenever you decide just by tapping on it. To step it up a notch and achieve the ultimate essentialism, I turned on scheduled summary for my notifications. When you turn that on and you select the less important apps that you want to get notified about at a certain time, you get a summary of them. I've left only my messages, phone app and banking notifications to bypass the summary. A lot more elegant and less distracting than anything else. One thing I take advantage of in messages, by the way, is the ability to unread a message. I usually do that for my emails and now that I can do that with messages means that I won't miss replying to someone in case I've opened the message to take a look at. Next is a feature that I mentioned in my latest macOS tips video and that is the ability to showcase the Wi-Fi password. When you get inside your Wi-Fi settings and you tap on the little eye icon of the network you're connected to, you can hold the finger over the password to reveal it and even copy it if necessary. For security measures, you get blasted with Face ID first and just like that, you don't have to dig in your nose to share your internet password with someone who's on Android or Windows. While on the topic of Face ID, it now works in landscape mode, which should have been the case since the introduction of the first iPad Pros that came with Face ID, if you ask me, but hey, better late than never. This, by the way, works on iPhone 13 models and up, and no, it doesn't mean that you have landscape home screen on the iPhone, which is a bummer. Keyboard haptic feedback is the number one feature I turned on as soon as I installed iOS 16. Since the iPhones have some of the best vibration motors, this feature is extremely satisfying to use, and I don't know why, but it kind of helps me type more efficiently. It feels as if it's reducing the gap between digital experience and tactility. The second feature that I turned on on iOS 16 is the battery percentage. This is kind of tricky though, because when turned on, you see the percentage, but you also see the battery always filled up in order to help the numbers stand out. On occasions, you glance at the battery feeling confident only to focus and realize that you have 21%. It's kind of tricky. The third feature that I turned on was in weather, and that is the severe weather notification. This is not the precipitation warning that you might get, but rather a warning that you wouldn't want to get. Better have it turned on though. A feature that you might not even realize you want to take advantage of is the automatic verification, which is hidden inside your Apple ID settings. Under password and security, you can scroll down and turn it on, which will bypass captures in apps and on the web by allowing iCloud to automatically verify the device and account that you're using. It works on some of the most popular capture services and what that means for you is that you won't have to play the press the traffic light game when you want to log in from somewhere. Inconspicuous and time saving. Another time saving feature that I already use all the time is copy and delete a screenshot. When you take a screenshot for the purpose of sharing that screenshot with someone, as soon as you press done, you'll now see the copy and delete option which will save you time from pressing additional buttons or the need to open your gallery and clear it up from unnecessary screenshots. A great example of this feature is tying it with the Mac where I take a screenshot on my iPhone, press copy and delete, and then paste it in the document that I'm working on. This is awesome. You know what else is awesome? Snooker. Look at the table here and tell me at a glance, out of all the balls in line, how many will move if I strike them head on? One, two, three or four. Predicting the results of shots by considering the cascade of forces and reactions between the individual balls actually follows the same rules as a particle accelerator. Some Avengers stuff here. All these awesome puzzles open your eyes to the world around you thanks to brilliant scores on scientific thinking, which help you gain the understanding and insight in order to look at the world in a different way. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science and computer science interactively and with thousands of lessons like this snooker lesson you can learn specific skills that will help you become a better thinker to get started for free visit brilliant.org forward slash this is e or click on the first link in the description and the first 200 of you will get 20 percent off brilliant's annual premium subscription if you enjoyed this video check out my previous iphone episode where we talk about extremely handy features like text replacement which can save you hours like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter and as always Always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E. Over and out.